Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the July Southern Pride DNN User Group Meeting. Uh, we are excited today because we have uh, a full house filled with uh, some of our uh, regulars who join us on every single um, Southern Pride event. Uh, we have some of the regulars who join us uh, repeatedly to give us intro and updates and new uh, new ideas. Uh, Mitch Sellers is going to be our main speaker for the evening, talking a little bit about um, a new uh, module for authentication that he's put together. Um, we have uh, several people who have attended uh, that are authentication-related people or that I know uh, from having worked with them on authenticator-related things. So we've got a pretty good group here online. And then, of course, as we do every episode, uh, or a meeting, we will record those and post them on the Southern Fried website. So uh, thank you to everyone who's watching this after the fact and joining us online as well. Uh, we will dive right into uh, some of our information, and um, that always begins with community information and announcements. Uh, probably the biggest thing that uh, I want to mention and announce is that uh, we did have just a few days ago a release for uh, DNN 9 Point six point two, and uh, as with many of the more recent updates, uh, there are small changes uh, behind the scenes that are uh, important. That uh, if you are in any kind of DNN nine range, uh, if you can get up to it, it's fantastic to get up to nine point six point two now uh, as the newest release. Uh, really, we're pushing towards very soon nine point seven as uh, you know the next, and we're. we're we're getting this one, but then we're thinking ahead to the next one. Uh, at some point in time in the future, we'll be able to say goodbye uh, permanently to the Telerit controls, and that'll be uh, good when that happens. And until then, uh, keeping up to date with the newest versions and updates is something that uh, we all need to stress and uh, uh, and really focus on. Um, you know, perhaps uh, David, or I'm not sure if... Um, uh, Valadas is on. I'm trying to look, scroll through my list here. Uh, does anybody want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that went into 9.6.2? Anything special to add in? David or Mitch, perhaps? Nothing really overly specific with 9.6.2. Um, you know, just a bunch of fixes and improvements. Um, those are using JWT authentication. There is a fix there that impacted certain brand new installations that we might have been using it, um, but really it's it's much more on uh, you know overall improvement. I do believe just since we're we're mentioning it, there is most likely going to be a nine six three release that's going to be fast tracked here probably in the next week. Um, there's okay. some hidden issues that were not found during testing that impacted 962. Um, so I, I, I don't have a great status on it other than knowing that I'm confident that we're going to need to make one. All right. Good to know. Uh, good to know. Um, but uh, for the moment, um, there aren't any breaking concerns, as in we should hold off on 962 yet. Go up to 962, and then 963 will come soon. If you're on 961, I'd probably just stay there. Okay. If you're not on 961, I get to 961, but I, I probably mm -hmm. would not go to 962 just because 963 is coming. Just is coming short. I um, I have the same issue with uh, several sites where we move them up to 9.5 to get ready uh, for things in the 9.6 range. So we'll uh, we'll spend that time getting up to 9.61, and then we'll be ready for 9.63. Um, another um, release, um, they are few and far between, but uh, we did have another release from Evoke. Uh, so anyone who's running Evoke versions, uh, 9.44 was the most recent release for quite a while. Uh, but then this past week, uh, they also released a 9.6.1 version. So if you are running or managing uh, Evoke instances, it's worth mentioning there's also been an update uh, there as well. Continuing on with uh, DNN Community News, um, we go to the uh, dnncommunity.org website. That's, of course, the main website where we are now putting all of the content that is for the community, of the community, and by the community, blog posts, 
books, uh, forums, um, information on how to and, and uh, really a good networking connection of information from and for the DNN community. Um, in recent blog posts um, on the line with us uh, here today, uh, we've got Don Gingold uh, put out a good article uh, talking about an interesting event that's coming up. Uh, DNN Global 2020 was something that he talked about in kind of a fun and nostalgic way, talking about getting together for conferences and events, um, having having helped put on and participating in DNN Summit that was back uh, at the end of February. It seems like we were there at this magical time period that just happened to occur right before COVID and right before the lockdown. And we were in Disney World going around the Star Wars uh, events and rides, shuffling in between thousands and thousands of people, and I can't imagine doing that right now with with the situations all around us. So we were we were there at exactly the right time uh, in person. Um, but I think the lines at and, Disney World right now are really short. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is very. Now they're true. reporting that too. I mean, there's so few people that are there now, even though they've opened, that you can get on all the rides very quickly. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, that's kind of a segue for me to uh, pass the mic to, uh, you know, someone we haven't seen on video like this in, in quite a while. I'm excited to uh, to see and, and say hi to Gifford Watkins. Uh, Gifford, you want to talk for just a, a brief moment about uh, what you're cooking up here for Dean and Global? Yeah, sure. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, well, I just know that uh, we're not going to be able to get together at a brick and mortar event and while I've taken some time away from the community um, it's certainly always been my passion and um, you know some of the some of the tragedies that have happened during COVID I think about John Prine passing away and how how badly I've been wanting to do like a John Prine tribute you know get a bunch of band members together and go through some of his songs and it dawned on me that that's kind of the same situation that uh, we're in with, with TNN. It's, it's just been a long time for me. But so much good has happened, and really it wasn't for any other reason other than we had accomplished what we set out to accomplish way back in 2005 when I started in DNN. It was my passion to see the community take control of the roadmap for the project. And really, in the last year or so, that's that's a couple of years ago, anyhow. Um, that's uh, that's been the reality, and so I see this event as my tribute to all of the people that supported me when I uh, got into the um, ecosystem. Uh, you know, starting with Will Stroll and Brian Scarbo. Brian Scarbo gave up one of his spots for me to speak in Tampa at a day of .NET Nuke in 2009, I believe. And that was that was kind of me coming out of the closet with, with DNN because up until that point, I didn't tell anybody I used DNN. That was my secret weapon. And to <laughs> announce to tell people that DNN existed, to me, it was just like giving away the, you know, the recipe for my secret sauce. So I, I served up in MPAs the first four years I was offering DNN. And Will Stroll and uh, and uh, John Walker and, uh, and a few others, they convinced me that, hey, you should you should join our community. You should be vocal. So I started the user group. And, well, here we are, 15 years, 14, something like that. I don't know. More than a decade later, anyhow. So got a rich history with the founders of DNN and with the original um, organizations, uh, you know, guys to put events together. So this is my tribute. I've phoned up and so so you've gathered a group of people uh, who are gonna um, you know have a, a virtual uh, online conference and, and speak. And the last time I looked at it, it was one day, but uh, you're, you're more than one day now, right? Well, the software, I invested in the software, it's Hoffman, and um, it allows you to run a 72-hour continuous event. So I started with Friday, and as I continued to reach out to people and they onboarded, I just 
we I just added another hour and added another hour and now we're well into uh, well into Sunday. So still looking for uh, folks that want to speak. I mean, it would be a shame if we only all got one speaking engagement in. This is another uh, notch on your lanyard. Uh, so if uh, you want to get that in and get that on your resume, then uh, you know this this is the event, right? So um, uh-huh. I did reach out to all of the brick and mortar. They're you know, normal event organizers and ask them for their blessings and reached out to the co-founders of BNN and, and let them know that I was going to do this. So it wasn't that I just did it, but it was that I let everybody know and I just did it. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a very interactive platform. I've run about a hundred or so concerts using this platform. So um, I never refunded a ticket and uh, if we don't get any sales, I won't have to worry about that for this event either. It'll just be a family reunion amongst the speakers. But I would love for anybody that's going to participate in this and speak to help promote the event. It's, again, this is to me a family reunion. It's a tribute to all of these people that are here who have picked up their phone when I called, got me through sticky situations with dicey clients. And, uh, you know, we've always done so much together as a community, this is just my way of paying it forward. So we'll post the um, we'll post the links in our write up when we post up the, the event for Southern Pride, but it's uh, it's basically hop in dot two and then you go to your events and it's called DNN Global. So DNN Global twenty twenty, again that's coming up here uh, the end of July, July thirty first through at the moment, August third. Yep, and you can go dnnglobal.ca too. I got the .ca for, as a tribute to Sean Walker, our great Canadian. All right, <laughs> that makes sense. That makes DNN sense. Global. Well, thank you, Gip. There, thank you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, Gip. I gotta see what you just up to these days. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, stick around, uh, especially in the peanut gallery. Uh, you're uh, up for sticking around. We'd love to keep keep talking with you. Um, so, in the list of things that showed up in the dnncommunity.org site, uh, one of the other ones that was in here was an article that uh, jumped to my attention about fine-tuning the HTML output of DNN. Uh, we actually have Jeremy on as well, but I had planned to bring this one up because this one, um, as I said, jumped to my attention. Uh, the a good example is from a, a kind of a front-end or, or a coding perspective developer who was frustrated that they couldn't just hack away at the default .ASPX and make some changes there, and they felt like they should be able to do that. Uh, Jeremy gives a different approach and a different way to do that far better than editing the uh, default .ASPX file uh, for being able to, in my words, Use ASP.NET to transform uh, what's going on with uh, with that output, and so he has a, a good uh, and brief uh, write up about this and uh, some suggestions. So, if uh, you've had that as an issue um, that you want to um, try out, take a look at this article. It's on the DNA community site. Uh, Jeremy, you want to say a couple of sentences about it? Uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just real quick. quick I got to give credit to uh, Daniel Pilatus. This, uh, this uh, article came out of a conversation, out of a conversation I had, I had with him in Slack, Slack about three months, ago. three months ago. So he gave, so he gave me pieces, pieces of the code, and, code and I managed to get it put together and, um, and um, made a made front-end, front-end, developer front-end developer very happy. Very happy. I, think I, I think I mentioned that in the, that in the article. But yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah fun, it's easy, fun, easy, quick, fast, fast efficient, efficient, seems to be seems very, to be very performant, and I highly recommend doing it if you need that kind of thing. Hey, Jeremy. I think you may have two connections or something. We're hearing nothing but echo, I believe. Yeah, it was two Jeremy's. It was so awesome, a set of coding, so efficient. Uh, he was able to be on here with us. Um, well, so uh, that article is up on the site. Um, you know, kind of a, a last set of um, community-related things. Uh, I'll mention uh, again towards the end of the meeting that, um, you know, of course, we're doing uh, SoFry. On the third Thursday of every month, uh, that's a regular for us. Um, but um, uh, one of the things that we're going to 
Uh, due again coming up in the fall is another round of our DNN Jeopardy. Uh, that was a lot of fun when we did that uh, back in May. Um, I don't know that Daniel is on. I haven't seen him in the list yet, but uh, Daniel did receive finally of his deck. Of course I'm on. Oh, there you are. <laughs> when uh, am I not here? <laughs> um, you know, it's a long list. Uh, I need to scroll through to see everybody. Uh, <laughs> But uh, Daniel finally received the uh, deck of playing cards that we sent him for winning the um, the So Fry Jeopardy, and uh, we'll do that again here in the fall. Together, um, together with maybe... a couple of stickers, and now I have the DNN logo in upper and lowercase. You see, that's what I was gonna. That's a perfect segue because I have extra stickers. Um, I was gonna mention that as well. I am just a huge fan of this. Uh, vinyl sticker shop that is supplying me with these different things and i don't know how well it's going to come across for the camera no i don't know that you can see it too well but uh, i have glitter uh, metallic stickers and more important for air dv i now have tattoos uh, temporary tattoos so when i am in person at one of the next uh, so fry or at one of the next conferences like dean and summit or dean and connect uh, I will be sporting a, a temporary tattoo to uh, to rival uh, Eric VB. So we have those as giveaways, uh, both when we go to conventions and summit. But if it's going to be a little while before in person, uh, we'll look at uh, starting to send out things like that in the mail uh, for participating here in SoFi events and saying thank you for for joining us. Okay. With that as a, a full stop to the community information, uh, let's talk a little bit about the man, the myth, the Mitch Sellers. Um, we know Mitch from, of course, hey, IO Computer Group. Ryan. Yes. Yeah, this is Clint. Can I interrupt for one moment regarding community? Anytime. So, I should have asked, do we have any other community things that I missed? Well, you, I mean, you may going to be covered this. I don't know, but our friend and speaker here, Mr. Mitchell Sellers, had an important interview today. Were you going to cover that? No, I don't know about this important interview yet. Okay, so Mitchell is running for the .NET Foundation Board of Directors, which, as everybody knows, the .NET Foundation provides a lot of resources that help the DNN machine keep running. And uh, so I wasn't able to watch it live. I think Smeltzer was. Um, Smeltzer, you could give us some live review, or Mitchell could give us review. I just want to let everybody know that he's running, and we need to support him. And if you're a member, uh, then you should vote for him. This is a big deal. I uh, created a membership just so I could vote last year or the year before for uh, entries. Mitch? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's... Um it's going to be an interesting competition. There, there's three spots available. There's 18 of us running. The voting is weird um, for those that actually participated in the voting last year. Um, I can't even begin to try to explain how the actual ballot works. Um, they have a big tutorial on how it works, and it's still a little weird. Um, but, you know, my biggest thing is, the Dynamo Foundation has helped us a lot, but there's a lot of things that we've had to fight through. So, you know, my whole point in running for the .NET Foundation board is to try to help the .NET Foundation help the projects better. Um, you know, mm -hmm. without the .NET Foundation, especially with everything that's happened with Corp in the last three to four years, you know, we would be, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, all of our build resources, our deployment resources, you know, all of that is, is coming from the .NET Foundation, um, and they've really given us the tools necessary to be able to stand on our own as an open source project. Uh, so my goal is to, you know, if I can get elected, to help further that mission to help provide better guidance so uh, that projects like ours and ours included um, can really be made better. Um, you know, the .NET Foundation has done great things, but there's tons of room for improvement, especially when it comes to longevity, security, and stability. And, you know, I think that our trials and tribulations make it a pretty interesting thing. So, yeah, anybody that's not not a member, you know, they, they do request 
a membership fee, but there's you know you can uh, you can basically request an exemption from those fees for basically any reason. Um, <clears throat> but any any support there is greatly appreciated. The vote open next week. Yeah, I believe they open Monday and run through that following for two weeks. Um, I would have to triple check my dates here. We just did like back to back interviews today, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll watch for that, and we will put the link out, and uh, we will get the social machine going. As soon as that link is uh, present, uh, then we'll do that from our own Twitter accounts and our SoFry Twitter accounts, and we'll uh, we'll start to get the word out. I uh, I just want to add that uh, I did watch it uh, today, and um, thought Mitch uh, represented himself uh, quite well, and also, you know, uh, kudos to you for getting a good show to DNN. Uh, that always uh, that always helps, I'm sure, spread the word around. Yeah, well, and CNN got a little love in the interview that I did right before that interview um, with the folks from Code Palooza. Um, I literally hung up on that interview and, and went to the .NET Foundation one um, back to back today. So, I think uh, maybe it's the uh, that one that I watched. <laughs> so I've got something else to watch uh, soon. <laughs> Yeah. If you watch the short one with Heather Downing, who is giving me crap about being a bird, that yep. was the Doctor Foundation one. Okay. If you're about the longer one, that was with me and Chad Green from Code Palooza. No, no, no it was <laughs> definitely the bird. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, this is what happens. They, they think, like, here's the list of questions, and then, boom, out of the gate, she went with something that was not on the list of questions. Um, <laughs> teach me to promise somebody an airplane ride and, and not deliver <laughs> well, um, you know, that, uh, that's a good segue to describe that Mitch has uh, both been with and in DNN forever, um, and he has been around uh, within the community uh, doing a wide range of things for quite a long time. Um, you know, here uh, I was, uh, you know, bringing up, of course, the Iowa Computer Gurus uh, site where you can get a bunch of information. Uh, there's the MitchSellers.com site where we all used to go for information and uh, updates on how to upgrade DNN version 4 and DNN version 5. Um, if we spend a little time um, on GitHub, you can run through Mitch's open source um, uh, modules and uh, extensions that he's created, and uh, two of those are my favorites that I've used um, or have come to my attention. Um, I'll go ahead and kind of scroll down and mention that uh, myself, I use the, well, uh, I use the DNN schedule jobs regularly. It's an almost constant install on every DNN instance I work with because uh, there are often times when I need to run a stored procedure or a SQL query as a regular DNN scheduled task, and this is the best way to get it into DNN, is, um, which is DNN schedule jobs. Uh, recently in the DNN Open Help Slack um, channel, um, someone was talking about how to swap their DNN, older DNN instance from using um, the encrypted to the hashed setting for all of their user passwords, and that larger conversation brought back up the uh, secure my install utility function, which can help you through that fairly hairy process. Uh, so there are free and open source items from Mitch. Uh, there's guidance uh, in the advisory groups from Mitch, um, but uh, there are a few paid modules that are out there from uh, Mitch Sellers, and you know, two of those that I, I call attention to are authentication related. Uh, the external database connection or external database authentication uh, is a module that I researched for a project where the client had an external database with usernames and passwords, and they wanted to keep their external database with usernames and passwords. And with this uh, module, we could use that instead of the core DNN uh, data and ASP.NET membership uh, related uh, information for, for authentication. And that's a, uh, a fantastic use uh, there. Uh, he's also created something uh, that is out there for IP-based auto login, also authentication related. So it's no strange thing that we have an, uh, another interesting um, 
authentication related module or provider um, coming out here from Mitch. Uh, he talked about this uh, a month or two ago. And that's two-factor authentication, which is something that, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't been uh, – certainly isn't robust and, and featured in many other places uh, within DNN yet. Um, it's the future for certain kinds of authentication, and uh, I know already a few clients of mine that are going to be ready for this instantly. So I'm very excited to pass the mic here to, uh, to Mitch, and we'll start taking a look at what he's put together here for two-factor authentication for DNA. All right, well, thanks very much here. I'm just making sure that my test site is doing what it's supposed to do because, you know, that's the way demos go. Uh, we, we just hang on demos because that would be the way it's supposed to go. Yeah, all right. So the real question is sharing. How in the world do you... Oh, it's, uh, it's passing it to you now. Okay. Should I have a button or it? It is crawling, but uh, I can see that it's asked me to pass you the presenter, and it's thinking about it. Anybody got any good jokes? <laughs> um, I may have to do this the other way. Hold on. Do I have to be using the desktop app for this to work? Yes, you cannot share your yes. using the desktop app. That's correct. You could pass it to me if you wanted me to, uh, you know, present something or bring it up on screen, but uh, it won't let you um, without. Let's see if it'll let me just. Yeah, and forewarning, I'm not sure if it does it anymore, but it used to temporarily disconnect you and reconnect you, so don't freak out when it disconnects you. Yeah, and it might have just done that. Which it may have just done because I saw him disappear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Clint had said, anybody know any good jokes? Um, uh, jokes are something that elude me uh, unless I absolutely need them uh, or I, I write them down on a sheet of paper. There was a an episode of Monk where uh, the character Adrian Monk needed to tell jokes spontaneously, so he kept three-by-five cards in his pocket anytime he needed to tell a joke. Okay, can you guys hear me again? Yeah, we hear you, yeah. and we see your screen. You're all good. We actually see both of your screens, it looks like, sir. I was just going to say, you see both screens? Because if so, that makes my life a little easier. As long as it's you not see both screens. Perfect. All right. So we have the, the two-batch authentication module is a replacement authentication provider for DNN that right now as of today, um, currently supports um, email-based two-factor authentication. And we are working on the next release here over the course of the next couple of weeks um, based on individual feedback from those that are looking to leverage, um, uh, you know, leverage our offering. Because what we found is originally we wanted to look at doing something with, um, uh, you know, SMS-based two-factor, but then as we started talking with individuals, you know, things such as, okay, well, then there's a third-party service. Well, that's not necessarily going to, you know, achieve the goals that everyone was looking to do or have too much cost associated. So we've been, we're looking right now at the next release containing support for Google Authenticator as well. Um, so oh, no. you'll basically be able to choose email or Google Authenticator. Um, we've had requests for a few other options, including potentially Duo. Um, but the current roadmap is showing 
Google Authenticator as, as the next release, and then SMS-based two-factor utilizing Twilio um, as a you know add-on shortly thereafter. But that will require you know a third-party third-party API keys and you know some third-party license costs. Very limited if you don't have a bunch of logins, um, but something that uh, you know we're, we're still working on. Um, if you have a use for this, if you have a scenario where you want to be leveraging this for your clients or you have a specific need, um, any preferences here is something that we're really going to take into consideration. Um, the, the goal with this was to make the process as seamless as possible. Um, you know, the, the idea for this really from us, from our side came from completing security audits, working with some of the clients in more secure fashions, right? The, some of the functionality you get as a super user, for example, is very easily exploited to do something bad if you have a you know insecure password or if your password list is compromised. Um, so we had a lot of requests of like you know can, what can we do to to lock that down more or maybe administrator level access you know for certain cases. So the initial feature set that came from that was kind of focused around. We want two-factor authentication, but we don't want to slam the gauntlet down and say that everybody has to be two-factor. Um, the idea is around we're, we're allowing you to opt in. If you choose to not have two-factor enabled, the DNN authentication process is going to happen just like normal. You're going to log in. Nothing unique is going to happen. Um, but if two-factor is enabled, you're going to have a slightly different user experience um, where that that second um, authentication is required. In addition to that, authentication providers are not necessarily the easiest things to work with within DNN. So we also went at this with um, the concept of, you know what, if we're going to release it, we've got to have a full user guide because most people don't even know that there's options available to go in and configure your authentication providers, let alone what to do to turn a secondary authentication provider on and the built-in DNN authentication provider off. So part of that was making sure that we had the right documentation around the processes and procedures. And lastly, as much as we have all of the amazing features and, and we require two-factor, we also understand that sometimes bad things happen. So just like we do with all of our other authentication providers, we do provide a method to be able to bypass this process. So email, right, it's, it's possible that your SMTP configuration settings could be changed or your password expires. As we look into using, you know, other forms of two-factor authentication, right, we could have even bigger issues, right, your, your Twilio account could get suspended or otherwise. So from there, we built in a process. You have to do it from the web config, but if you put in a particular app setting in the web config, you're going to be able to bypass it. The idea here is, is we don't want you bypassing this any other way. The whole point of two-factor is to be more secure. So if you really have to bypass it, the fact that you have to restart the application shouldn't be a big deal, right? It's, it's a true emergency procedure, if you will. Um, so right now, um, we, we have, you know, everything out here. I'll kind of show you guys how it all works. Um, two limitations that we do have right now is we are not providing support to complete verified user registration. So if you are using verified user accounts registration, we're not, we're not currently supporting that workflow um, in this provider. Um, we will look at adding it if necessary um, for, for those that are looking to do so. Do you mean just at the creation step or even after those users get created, there, you know, there's some mm -hmm. kind of problem? They're totally fine after they're created. It's just we do not, we are not supporting right now the entry of the verification code um, because of the clunky process that exists within DNN and where we need to inject things. So we're trying to find, you know, if we if we were to support it, we need to find a way to let that workflow go from a user perspective that doesn't 
require multiple additional steps because of the well, way that that could expire plus ours and otherwise. Since it's an email verification code, you're kind of doing it anyway. One could argue that you receive it, we activate the account. Hmm. But, but that's, and that's part of what we're considering is that if you use two factor and it comes in, that we just would set your account as verified, but there's other reasons that accounts will be marked as not verified, right? I mean, that's a way, right? You unauthorize a user to not let them in. So we're, we're erring on the side of extra secure right now because there's some really from a security perspective built in deficiencies in the way that that process works. Um, and then the only other thing is, is that we are not currently supporting um, the Remember Me cookie. Um, this is based on some persistence issues because um, we, we need to work on the documentation side of things and, and really what, what is the expectation? If I choose Remember Me with two-factor authentication, do we need to build in the concept of a I'm remembering this device and don't ever do two-factor again and we give you additional config? Do we allow you to stay with a persistent login cookie? Um, this, this is something that, you know, we're basing our roadmap here a little bit on the security-centric side of things. And the security-centric side of things says, for the love of God, don't show a Remember Me checkbox. And, and don't let people, you know, record them because we're dealing with potentially just elevated user accounts. So again, we are totally flexible from a functionality perspective in terms of, you know, if there's a big desire for us to implement a feature one way or the other, um, we'll take that into consideration. We'll make it a setting. But what we're trying to do with this offering is elevate the default security that folks have. And by doing so, Remember logins and those kinds of things right, are, are security anti-patterns, really, um, when you look at best practices, um, especially with the way that our authentication stuff works, right? It's cookie-based, you know, cross-site scripting attacks and those kinds of things that lift that cookie. If it's a long-time persistent cookie, it's not necessarily a great thing um, along the way. So really quickly, um, you know, when you, when you purchase the, you know, when you purchase the module, it's, it's listed in the DNN store. It will be listed on our website here shortly. Um, we're in the middle of a, a little bit of a redesign that uh, had a couple things go a little awry on us before um, we could get it launched. So we'll, we'll have it actually listed on our site as well um, shortly. But once you install it, it will show up under the extensions page as an authentication system. The name that we've gone with, current version is 2.0.9, um, and it's simple DNN two-factor authentication. I mean, that's really the whole purpose here is we want it to be simple. So as you come in, in here, we can use the edit icon to be able to get into our extension settings. And this is where people usually get confused with how these things are configured. Don't come in here expecting to change something under package information or extension settings, license, release notes. Where we really want to go is we want to come to the site settings section. The site settings section is where you can actually configure all of the individual settings for how this authentication provider works. We, we do allow this on a portal by portal basis. So you can utilize this extension on all of your portals, a single portal or any combination therein. You just have to configure it in each individual portal. Um, the way that the persona bar currently works, you must navigate to that portal, go to extensions, go to settings and make those changes there. Um, this tab only loads for the currently executing portal. Um, and in here, basically we have a couple of, we have a couple forks in the road in terms of where we are working from a configuration perspective. We have an enabled flag which simply enables our authentication provider to show. The second that this is turned on, you'll see an additional tab on login if you do nothing else where our authentication provider will exist. Just simply enabling our provider, but not doing anything else will not result in there being any change um, to the process from a login perspective. 
The next two options are where you go through and configure what's necessary. So we can require two-factor for super users, and there's a note here that that's a global setting. Right? Super users always exist across all portals. So if you say super users require two-factor, super users require two-factor, end of story. Um, our recommendation is that every single installation should have this check. Um, there, there are too many things you can do as a super user to not have this step in place. Um, and the next piece then is we can control by user role who else requires two-factor authentication. So in this scenario, in this portal, I have registered users as well as super users, so basically everybody. But you could just as easily come in here and say only content administrators, or you could say only those you know, in the marketing team or, or whatever other combination that you would like. Um, the device trusting piece, um, this is something that we are doing limited device trusting to stop the repeated two-factor, um, but that's automatic. If, if you are you know, choosing that device, we're letting those devices be trusted. Um, we're working on a way to be able to audit and add this for future things so that you can keep an eye on how many people have trusted the device or otherwise. And then we have two bits of control in terms of the two-factor itself. So for right now, we have the two-factor code is, is valid for five minutes is our default configuration. So a email two-factor code, when we get into other things such as Google Authenticator, it kind of takes care of it on its own. Um, but as we go into SMS, same concept. You're only going to be able to use it to log in once, and that login must be within whatever window you have configured. So if you set this for five minutes, if they get that email, they get distracted, go get a cup of coffee and try to use that code 15 minutes later, the login is going to fail. It's going to require them to initiate the process again. Um, and that behavior will continue you know, with SMS based. Um, the only exception being that Google Authenticator, the code, re the code cycles every one minute. So as long as they've entered it appropriately within about a 90 second window, they'll be able to log in. And then lastly, we'll then have the two-factor mode. Right now, we only have, we have email only as our option. We are going to then be adding some additional configurations. One of the things that we're looking at is what are our failback modes? So as we're looking at it, if you're using, if you are using Google Authenticator, the idea is you use Google Authenticator. Um, we are looking at if we want to allow fallback. Uh, we know that with SMS, we are going to need to allow fallback to email just because of the, the potential, right, that you can't send an SMS via Twilio or that somebody changes their, their phone number or something like that. Um, so we're, again, we're going to continue adopting and adapting some of those as we, um, as we enhance that process. Um, from here, um, then you're able to kind of control, you know, the process. Username, username requirements, password requirements, all of those things are going to remain exactly the same based on the user's configured information. By default configuration, if we don't turn off DNN's built-in functionality. You'll simply see a new simple two-factor authentication um, tab. The one thing that will jump out at people right away is we are using a more streamlined bootstrap style look and feel for this login form. It's been a requested thing from a lot of individuals, but you do have some ability to go in and manually restyle this if necessary. But what we found is, is that using this layout in most of the third-party off-the-shelf skins that are out there, such as Porto or otherwise that are used by large groups, um, these look nice as well as with a lot of custom third, you know, custom developed skins because they're all utilizing the Bootstrap framework. So um, again, we're, we're looking at potentially supporting some other design concepts here, um, but the idea is to try to keep it a little bit more um, smooth. If you go and attempt to log in, assuming that I do everything correct, you're going to basically get sent an email. I have, uh, I have an email that came in my inbox. We are utilizing in this for any of the human entered codes. 
So any of the ones that you know are are done otherwise, you know, Google Authenticator, we don't have any control. But for user enter codes, we're going with six numbers, all random, no duplicated numbers. So the email that I received, just because I have too many other emails to actually share my email, is this. I can complete my login and I'm logged in without any issue. Um, but if I don't do that, if I sat on that screen for too long, I'm not going to be able to authenticate. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody goes and grabs, you know, let's just say, for example, my email was compromised. If somebody were to try to use that code to log in as me again, you're not going to be able to get in with that code. Um, and we're looking at potentially logging that to some audit trails and things like that. But again, not a great place to store that inside of DNN. So we're not, you know, we're logging it as a failure, as a login failure, um, but we're not logging it anywhere else as a, you know, hey, somebody tried to reuse a code, um, but it would be possible in a future edition. But that's kind of where we're going. It's, it's something new, right? We've, we've built custom implementations of this for probably at least 15 different clients. Um, we've done it with Twilio. We've done it with email. We've done it with, we did one with, I think it wasn't Duo. It was something other than Duo. Um, so we've, we've done it with a lot of different things. But we've never gone to make it, you know, a, hey, here it is for everybody. But with what we're seeing, with the types of access that you have within a DNN installation, you know, as super user, otherwise we wanted to be able to do our part to kind of make things, um, make things work. The other thing that, that we've done um, with this is we tried to be as permissive as we could with the license model. Um, I, I, we, we want we want people to use it, but we also don't want to be, you know, really crazy in terms of um, what you what you have to do. Um, so basically, what we're doing is we have a $149 um, site license, um, and basically this allows you to use it on a single installation. And in a single installation, you have one portal, you have 100 portals. We don't care. It, it's for one installation. Um, we then have a corporate edition for 449. Um, the idea with the corporate edition is if you have 20 DNN sites that you run, they're all yours and they're your companies. Um, 449.99. Install it on any of the installations that you have that you maintain. Um, and then we have an OEM edition, and this is geared for you know others that are doing like what we do. If you have you know a hundred clients that you work with, you built the site for them, et cetera. Um, and you want to go and do something, um, that's the license for you. Um, we've made our, our, our activation process and everything. We're not going to brick your site. We're not going to log you. You know, we're not going to lock you out because the license key expires. Um, and, and that, I think, is really important because we are, you know, we're setting that gate, we're setting that gate, right, at the login. Um, so we're, we're trying to be permissive with it. We're hoping that we don't... Uh, you know, experience any issues with it. Um, you know, we'll stand by and support things, um, you know, as necessary. But uh, we tried to make it at least as reasonable as we could um, across the board. And like I said, we are taking, we have future requests for new providers, but we're looking to kind of really see where the community wants to go. Um, you know, Google Authenticator, we, we see some people that love it. We see others that think it's just horrible. They don't want to use it for whatever reason. So we're trying to, trying, trying to balance which options we give. We don't want to give you 25 options because then we have 25 different things to support um, that, that may break us. So we're trying to find that right mix. And ju just to make sure, maybe that's a repeat, but we could enable like uh, Google Authenticator just for admins and hosts, right, and normal users. Yep, exactly. Yep. And that's, that's very cool. And that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. I mean, I think that in a lot of cases, right, registered users don't need it. Right, all that you really need from a, a from an authentication perspective, and, and what I what I would say, ninety percent, ninety percent of our customers are configured like this. Super users require two factor, administrators require two factor, everybody else logs in like normal. That 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 is about ninety percent of the installations. But what this does from a security perspective is is immense. 
right? We, we know that, you know, we trust an administrator to do a lot of things. Well, if you can't even log in without verifying that account, um, it's something there. The other, the other thing is, is we are not, when we go to do SMS, we will not be utilizing profile fields in DNN for the phone number. It will be a, a setup process that somebody does. Same thing's gonna occur for the security tokens for Google Authenticator. Um, and the idea behind that is, is that Google pro, or profile fields, right? Administrators could manipulate them, users could manipulate them depending on configuration. We don't wanna trust that data. So anything that we have that is related to that user's login is encrypted at rest in the database regardless of where you're stored. Um, to make sure that we don't have an, a way for somebody to you know, get in under one account and then figure out, oh, here's the encryption key for somebody else and, and get back in. And, and, that's the full, and that's the real focus, right? Security for all users that we need to. Um, to ask a question back to part of what you said earlier about um, you know, not having the additional step of email validation of records because, as you described, it's kind of a duplication of the same step that you're, you're describing now. If it's turned on in the system and we have administrator accounts and host accounts who are going to be run by two-factor authentication but standard users aren't, is is maybe a future way that you could go with that that you don't know when the user's created. I was going to say yeah, that normal I mean, standard users would get the two factor with that, and admin and host would get the two factor validation. The, with the way that the DNN, with the way that the authentication provider piece works, not exactly. We we have we could do, we could duplicate the functionality, right? Um, our our concern our concern with verified users and verifying them at login is really where we get into the individual and, and the concept of basically where this all goes, right? If you unauthorize a user account, did you unauthorize it or is it because they haven't yet verified their account and become authorized? So in our case, you know, we wouldn't want to trigger a resend of an authorization. Um, there's another concern that I have with, the, with authorization of user accounts that I am not at liberty to discuss, but that's one of the two reasons that, that we're currently not supporting it. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing individuals that are relying on verification in very many systems where it's, it's going to be necessary due to the spam emails and you know, spam registrations that are occurring. And we may be wrong, and that's where I think if we are, I, I would love to to have some dialogues with with individuals of what maybe we do need to do to to try to streamline that. Um, so then you also mentioned uh, the the providers there for what you might connect into um, Google um, Authentication and Duo uh, are probably the two primary ones that I've experienced and run across on a more regular basis. I mean, there's obviously just straight text and there's obviously straight email, but otherwise, if you're running it from an app, the Google Authenticator is, is absolutely one solid way and Duo is the other. Um, are there any others that are worth considering that are, I don't know, as easy to use as those two, those two are? It seems like those would be good first choices. My, Microsoft Authenticator is the only other one that we are some that are really in on the, the Azure side of things, Microsoft Authenticator comes up, but we're not seeing much of a customer demand for it. Um, knowing, uh, knowing that my children's uh, Xbox playtime, their laptop use time, and anything that I'm managing with Microsoft Family, I'm going through Microsoft Authenticator a couple times an evening, uh, approving something or extending playtime, uh, that one works pretty smoothly uh, once you get used to logging into it. Yep. And it's, pretty, it's basically the same process as Google Authenticator. Um, uh, the biggest thing is there's a one-time device registration, right? So if you turn it on, 
The next time that individual logs in, they will they will basically marry their device and then going forward from there, they'll have to log in with that device. Um, we are looking at, and, and part of the reason why we're not pushing this all the way out yet is, what is the workaround when you lost your Google Authenticator device? If you lost your phone, you don't get back in, you didn't back up the keys. I was just about to talk about that, yeah. Um, Cloudflare uses Google Authenticator. And um, if you lose that device, um, it can be difficult to unlock to the states where you uh, rejoin or reauthenticate to another device. It's almost as though you have to print out that barcode and hold on to it so that you can join back in again. Because once that barcode is or QR code is gone, um, it's very difficult to reauthenticate to something else. Well, and, and that's where it's a little bit interesting because really with Google Authenticator, um, there are settings that you can use to have Google Authenticator actually back up those keys for you to the cloud. So um, Duo works the same way. If you check a little box, Duo will back up your keys for you, and life is good when your phone gets destroyed because a battery fails and iOS goes weird. But if you don't, you spend or five you hours on support that. An older iPhone to an iPhone 11. I mean, uh, upgrade yeah. and switching devices, period. Yep. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the reason why we've looked at, like right now, we, we know we, we've left the emergency back door in that you go into the web config and change it, right? As a, as a, that's not a great way. You could go in and then you could delete the pairing for that individual. Um, but that's what we're trying to look at right now before we go into the other forms is, is it acceptable, right, to say, well, you paired Google Authenticator, but if you can't give me your code, fine, let me send you an email. Is that acceptable or is that a potential breach? Part of me says it's a potential breach, right? We set up two factor to a mobile device to prove that I have the physical device, right? You know, two factor via email, don't get me wrong. It is far more secure than a lot of other options. But if a hacker gets access to your email, right, they're getting in. So that, that is something that, that we're actually, I'm waiting for a little bit of a response from a couple of our, our security focused customers that are looking for it. Um, but it goes back to that whole concept of, well, but I can't, we can't lock you out of your site. We, we want to improve your security, but we can't stop you from administering it. And it's something that we've been doing with authentication providers for almost 15 years now is there's always a way to get either back. And, and part of what we're, we're thinking is, is maybe there's a way to just literally fall back to DNN's one temporarily for like a one-time login, right? A one-time login bypass, um, you know, or, or something like that. But we just, we're working on some options and that's part of the reason why we've not rolled out, um, you know, that's why we haven't rolled out a full two-factor um, implementation with Authenticator yet is it's the failure scenarios. The actual coding, easy, done, ready to go. It's the what ifs on the other side. Yeah, perhaps, Mitch, you make it a, a setting that is a global setting that can be turned on or off, and you allow each DNN instance to decide how hardcore they want to be with that restriction, whether they allow a fallback to an email or they don't allow a fallback to email. Yeah. The, the, the current, that's basically the current theory. The current theory is email only, Google Authenticator only, Google Authenticator or email. And, 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 and then do similar things for SMS. Again, we don't want to overwhelm folks with options, but we want to do that. The other thing is, you know, maybe we just allow people to enable multiple and then a setting to pick, you must, you know, you must use one or two. Um, and, and that's what we're looking at. And, and any feedback with that, I'd, I'd welcome, you know, a conversation, you know, whether it be now or, or feedback after this, 
um, as to what you see, especially for, I mean, we've got a lot of people here that do a lot of implementations. Well, uh, we've kind of jumped in with questions, but, uh, you know, anyone else uh, who's online with us now uh, have questions or, or thoughts about what you've seen so far? And, and one other, the only other note here, um, because this is early, um, upgrades are free for at least the next year. So if you buy in today when it's email only, when we add in Google Authenticator, it's a free upgrade. When we, when we add in SMS, it's a free upgrade. Um, we understand that it is early, um, but really what we're trying to do, you know, the commercial marketplace in DNN is iffy at best in, in some ways. And so for us, it's a matter of is this something that, that there's a demand for? If there is, we're going to continue supporting it and adding new features and those kinds of things. So those that, that embrace us early on, we're, we'll make sure that uh, we, we keep you updated. Um, for at least the next year. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we've got comments in the uh, chat with people saying it looks good, um, but any thoughts or any questions about what you've seen so far, anybody? So let's say you enable two-factor only for admin and hosts, and you disable the standard DNN authentication. Uh, yep. For a regular user, this provider would load but would not ask the would not ask for two factor. Yep, it, it will awesome. it, behind the scenes it calls the regular DNN stuff. Um, and and if we want to get really technical, the way that the way that the provider works is it calls the regular DNN authentication first. So that way it handles expired password, yeah, exactly. it handles locked out accounts, that kind of thing. Once it gets back this user account is valid, then it goes through the check. Do you need to do two-factor? If so, it initiates that process. If you don't need to do two-factor, it completes the login and sends you on. Um, and we do support redirect after login, and we respect redirect after login both for the two-factor flow and the non-two-factor flow, um, actually fixing the one bug that exists in platform right now. Pretty cool. Um, don't know if uh, some of the folks who were on earlier are still on, but uh, you know Cheryl Bearden was on. I worked with her on some older uh, authentication-related things. I've been knee-deep in uh, Azure AD uh, authentication recently, um, but have done a couple of different OAuth and. Um, uh, the shibboleth was one uh, earlier example of uh, authentication we played around with, uh, you know, enabling, disabling, adding into the standard core authentications that are present. Um, easy enough to work within, but um, I like how this easily ties into or piggybacks into what's there and makes it easy for you to set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if Cheryl's on mute, but she says, nice module, nice to see you all. Yes, I just I just want to say hello, and it looks like a good model. Nice to see all y'all again. You as well. Good to see you, too. Absolutely. Good to see you, too. Look at that. Well, Mitch, I'll work on uh, pulling up a screen share here. Give me just a couple seconds. Come on, screen share. I think the uh, I think the free conference call uh, system tonight is tired. It's taking a while to come back up. Come on. Uh, Mitch, while we're waiting for that to come up, or, or I don't know, has it come up and it started sharing and I'm just not seeing a, a, it light up? Are you getting the screen share? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're seeing your screen. That's yeah, we're seeing your we see your screen share now. All right, good deal. Super slow delay. Um, well, so uh, while we were uh, talking, or before I, I, you know, run off of that. Uh, so, Mitch, you mentioned things are in the DNN store right now, and that you'd soon get things over onto uh, the Iowa Computer Guru site as well. Um, uh, what's your what's your timeline for some of your revisions and your timeline for some of your decisions ahead? Do you feel like uh, your Google and your Duo kind of choices are coming up in the next month or so? What's uh, what's a general timeline? Google Authenticator we're targeting August one, um, just because it's that might a, well be it's tomorrow. A, yeah, it, it's it's a known quantity that we're we're trying to get, um, and you know that should. That should help. Um, duo or otherwise, where we're we're still waiting for feedback at, at that point before we get in. Um, I think at at this point, um, more than anything, we're looking at Google Authenticator around August one, and Twilio based SMS probably shortly thereafter. Um, because we're, we're getting more requests for support, you know, for some of the mobile stuff that doesn't require a lot of setup or infrastructure, and that's kind of where Google Authenticator and SMS would fall into play. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, unless there are any other questions about uh, what Mitch has put together here and uh, kind of this exciting new direction that we can have for authentication with DNN. We'll uh, kind of move back into community things as we wrap up for tonight's session. Uh, back over to the um, notes that Clint started off us off with when we first welcomed Mitch on. Um, we have the voting uh, link and, and information here uh, for the uh, .NET Foundation election and the candidate screen. Uh, it's random, but uh, the very first time I loaded it, uh, Mitch was here in, uh, in top in good fashion. Uh, there are really only a handful of people that are up for this, uh, up for this position. And so it's something that we can, uh, we can all support and, uh, and participate in for voting and for participating. So, uh, this is, uh, is something worth, worth promoting for, uh, of course, uh, both our, our buddy Mitch and the, uh, .NET Nuke community in general because uh, really having someone there that uh, would have the main purpose of trying to help promote and support .NET Foundation in its use of helping its uh, project would obviously benefit other people, but in a selfish manner, it would very well benefit uh, DNN as well, so that would be very good for everybody. Uh, so go out and vote for that and participate once that uh, once that voting does open up again. Um, so um, uh, let me pass it back just for a moment to David and to uh, Clint to see if there are any other community items that we want to mention uh, as we're starting to close up. Uh, there's nothing that I'm aware of as far as community. David may have some updates, but that's it for my end. Like David saying right. none in, in the church. Um, all right. Well, then, uh, you know, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight for the Southern Pride DNN. Uh, this was the July meeting. We have August scheduled ahead uh, where we'll have Mike Smeltzer uh, joining us to do a little bit of uh, an introduction and uh, presentation. Uh, he's going to have a twofer uh, where he'll be doing a little bit of uh, shine and information with shine, but then also uh, a little bit of uh, information that I'll uh, dub or a name as the, uh, you know, uh, extra information for unused or untapped features of DNN. Uh, so he'll uh, present with us here for that, and uh, we'll get a little bit more details as we get closer to, to our August session. Um, for our September session, um, I let's see, September. For September or October, we'll bring back and we'll do another um, instance of our DNN Jeopardy uh, meeting that we put together. Uh, back in May. That was a lot of fun, and uh, it was interesting and enjoyable to go through a bunch of DNN trivia for 
those of us who are new to ZNN, those of us who have been around for a long time, those of us who are developers or integrators or designers, uh, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything in the questions that we try and put together there, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, the uh, the winner walks uh, walks away with uh, a customized deck of DNN playing cards, um, and uh, maybe another couple of uh, prizes that we all put together here from uh, from Southern Fried DNN. Um, so thank you very much for everyone who joined us online tonight. Thank you for everyone who's watching this on a replay. Uh, we will see you again that third Thursday of uh, August. Thank you very much. Thanks, 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 Thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night.